Welcome to Eye on the Tigers News. I'm Bianca Burrows. Thanks for checking in with us for the news we've been following for you. Jubilant Republicans pushed on early Wednesday to, to the verge of the sweeping rewrite of the nation's tax laws in more than three decades, a deeply unpopular bill they insist Americans will learn to love when they see their paychecks in the new year. President Donald Trump cheered the lawmakers on, eager to claim his first major legislative victory. After midnight, the Senate narrowly passed the legislation on a party line 51 to 48 vote. The protesters interrupted with chants of, kill the bill, don't kill us, and Vice President Mike Pence repeatedly called for order. Upon passage, Republicans cheered. The House earlier in the day passed the bill with local Congressman John Katko supporting the measure. Due to, due to a procedural error, the House will have to re-vote on the bill today. The Trump administration vowed Tuesday that North Korea would be held accountable for a May cyber attack that affected 150 countries, but it didn't say how, highlighting the difficulty of punishing a par pariah nation already sanctioned to the hilt for its nuclear weapon program. The WannaCry ransomware attack infected hundreds of thousands of computers worldwide and crippled parts of Britain's National Health Service. It was the highest profile cyber attack North Korea has been blamed for since the 2014 hack of Sony Pictures after it produced the interview, a satirical movie imaging a CIA plot to kill leader J Kim Jong-un. Investigators are looking into whether the Amtrak engineer whose speeding train plunged off an overpass, killing at least three people, was distracted by the presence of an employee in training next to him in the locomotive, a federal off official said Tuesday. The official, who was not authorized to discuss the matter publicly and spoke on condition of anim anonymity, said investigators want to know whether the engineer lost situational awareness because of the second person in the cab. A single vote may spell the end of Republican control in Virginia's House of Delegates. A Democratic challenger seems to have won a recount Tuesday by one vote putting the partisan balance in the House at a tie. It would mean a rare power-sharing agreement may have been brokered. Shelley Simmons beat three-term incumbent Republican delegate David Yancey in the 94th district in New Point News, 11,608 to 11,607, in the dramatic hours long recount that ended only after the precedent balance were exhausted and provisional balance were examined. We the People, the website that hosts petitions to the federal government, will be going offline at midnight Tuesday. The White House told the Associated Press that it was temporarily taking down the website. It promised to restore the online tool in late January, saying the new platform would save taxpayers more than one million a year. No other details were made available. Star Wars The Last Jedi was a box office force this weekend. The Last Jedi, the eighth installment in the Star Wars saga, premiered this weekend to the second biggest opening ever in North America. It brought in an estimated $220 million, according to Disney. The Disney film's opening is second only to its predecessor, Star Wars The Force Awakens, which opened to $248 million in December of 2015. The Last Jedi also had the second biggest Thursday night opening and the second biggest opening Friday. Again, the only Force Awakens has made more in those categories. We've got some changes coming to our weather. Here's Maya with the forecast. It seems like... Snow showers gave way this, mor this morning to cloudy skies and breezy conditions. Highs started out in the low 30s, but we're starting to feel a cold front enter the area and temperatures have gradually fallen during the day. We're cold tonight and the low teens are single digits. That cold weather could lead to some nuisance snow showers on Thursday and Thursday night. There's a better chance for some steadier snow on Friday, but we won't see more than two or three inches. It's Friday night where things get a little icy. As temperatures hover at the freezing mark, we're looking at the chance of some freezing rain Friday night. Looking longer range, Saturday's temperatures look to rise into the 40s before another system comes in and brings us 
some snow. And lastly, we're looking at the chance of a snow system Christmas Eve into Christmas Day, ahead of some very cold weather headed our way next week. That's a quick look at the weather. I'm Maya. Have a great day. SU basketball was pushed to the end last night. The wind moves the wind moves the team to ten and one. Here's Amber with some highlights. O'Shea Brissett was perfect from the foul line last night, sixteen for sixteen, helping Syracuse eke out an eighty one to seventy four victory over Buffalo last night in the Carrier Dome. Brissett finished with 25 points and 8 rebounds. Buffalo held SU's leading scorer, Tyus Battle, to just 8 shots for the night, leaving him with just 13 points. With the win, SU moves to 10-1 and, and takes on St. Bonaventure on Friday night. With the regular season winding down, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and the rest of the New England Patriots are back to a familiar spot, on top of the NFL. The Patriots moved up two spots to number one in the AP Pro 32 poll on Tuesday, receiving nine of the 12 first place votes for 379 points and balloting by media members who regularly cover the NFL. The Patriots, 11 and 3, edged the Steelers 27 to 24 at the Heinz Field on Sunday in one of the most anticipated matchups of the season. The Patriots now are in position to clinch home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs. Because the Patriots closed the regular season with home games against Buffalo and the Jets, they might not leave Foxborough until the Super Bowl in Minneapolis on, in February. The Bills may need to win both of its last two games to clinch a playoff spot, a first in two decades. Mexico's Lady Tigers dropped its sixth straight, la straight last night in 75-25 against Bishop Grimes. Senior Hannah Fravor led the way with 13 points. That's a quick look at sports. I'm Amber. Have a great day. That's all for us today. Thank you for watching. I'm Bianca.